So I want to look at this subjective objective range of beauty from, from the standpoint of philosophy. Now, it's really interesting. Back in around the 1200s, St. Thomas Aquinas, who people still read today, Catholics still read today in terms of theology, he's saying that beauty, truth, and goodness are transcendentals that are embedded in being. It's not something that, oh, I think that's beautiful. Beauty is the nature of the universe, and beauty and truth and goodness are united within being. Here's a quote by Emerson, an American transcendentalist. So that idea of beauty being embedded in the nature of the universe slowly, as the, as the centuries went by, started to shift until by the time you get to Descartes, Descartes is saying, now, okay, I'm saying that faith and superstition, all those things, this is the age of reason, I'm saying what I can experience directly and in a real sense, that will be the foundation of knowledge. It was a turn to the subject. And so he's saying, I think, therefore I am. Whereas Aquinas would have probably been saying, I am embedded in being, and therefore I think. I mean, it's a huge shift to that. Now, Descartes is saying, we're getting our knowledge from this bubble of my thinking process, really. And it's a hugely dramatic shift from where we feel our knowledge is embedded. And many people say that that turn of the self and Kant even more dramatically had what he called his Copernican turn. Copernicus was the guy that says, oh, it's the sun, the center of the solar system, not the earth. That was a huge shift in the way we saw ourselves. And he's saying, his Copernican turn to the self was just as important in terms of philosophy. So Aquinas, he's talking about metaphysics, of beauty embedded in the being of creation. And Kant is talking about aesthetics. Now aesthetics, the term was only coined in 1750, and it comes from the Greek meaning, I perceive. These are my senses, what I perceive. Beauty lies in the eye of the beholder, as opposed to actually being embedded in creation itself. Now, what I want to talk about in the next talk is how we, in fact, respond to these two. And our sense of beauty, in a, in a sense, really comes from our resonance with the beauty structured in the basis of creation. Now you might say, well, Kant and Descartes, and I mean, I don't know, I don't read them. But I was talking to a philosopher recently and he said, no, 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 once those ideas are in the air, we all are affected by them. And I can take an example. Let's say the special theory of relativity. Now, I haven't read it, probably haven't read it. It's very, very complicated. And yet, all of us know the kernel equation from that, which is E equals mc squared. Even if we don't know what it means, we still have seen it. And that equation is what created the atom bomb. And we have lived for 60 years in the shadow of that equation. We are in the air of the special theory of relativity, just as we are in the air of the philosophy of Kant and the turn towards the self. So in the next video, we're going to look at the implications of that, of where the experience of resonance lies in experiencing beauty.